Welcome back to another episode of the Open Source Cafe. Today we are joined by Iran from Firefly. And uh, today we're going to talk about everything is code, why it matters, what are the challenges that folks face, uh, folks face. and um, hopefully you know, you know, we'll have a good discussion and um, touch on some interesting points. But before we, met, before we get started, Iran, would you like to tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself and what you do at um, Firefly? First of all, thank you, Kunal, for having me in your show. Uh, my name is Iran Bibi. I'm the co-founder and chief product officer at Firefly. Uh, we are creating cloud asset management tool for DevOps engineers and cloud engineers, helping uh, uh, our customers to uh, get everything as code and uh, basically increasing the infrastructure as code coverage on their account. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for joining and uh, really looking forward to having a, a great conversation with you. Um, before we move forward with like the, you know, with everything as code and the best practices and stuff and how it benefits, let's talk a little bit more about what is the problem that it's it's trying to solve. So uh, what we see in the uh, past few years is that transition for moving from um, click ops kind of activity like creating uh, resources and configuration uh, manually through uh, the ui and the console of um, let's say the cloud vendors uh, to uh, a better methodology uh, of having everything described in your git so you can basically enjoy all of the benefits of um, the workflow flows that you have when you are writing application like you can have a peer review, you can have some uh, static code analysis and security testing and uh, uh, linters. And um, then you basically control the stuff that you are putting on the cloud. So infrastructure as code is uh, right now considered as uh, one of the main uh, ways to provision assets in the cloud. And it, it's uh, basically a great uh, methodology. And what we are seeing right now is that we are taking this concept of managing cloud as code and basically expanding it to other kind of uh, tools and configuration. Yeah, and uh, it's all about, you know, working with the complexity as well. So over the past few years, there's so many, you know, companies coming out, some working on like security, some are working on cost management of Kubernetes, some are working on all these other things. My, sometimes you know makes me wonder <laughs> why did we make things so complicated in the first place? Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> yes, uh, I think because uh, the current landscape is uh, really fragmented and um, think about the rush to the cloud, uh, everything is moving uh, really fast into cloud native workloads and because of that, you have first a short of, shortage of talent. And um, because you are doing stuff very fast, you are basically, in some of the case, creating a chaos. So there is a lot of tools that have been introduced in order uh, to get more control and uh, better alignment uh, on the stuff. So there is a race between you know doing stuff fast and learning the new tools uh, that you need to uh, put in your system in order to do that, not just fast, also do it good, like uh, with a good quality and a good uh, security posture and uh, other aspect, like whether my, my stuff that I put in the cloud, whether it's scalable, whether it's like resilient, and there is a ton of challenges on, on that specific domain. Yeah, you mentioned like some of the you know um, the the challenges and the the problems folks face. It's enter into the picture. Everything has code. Can you maybe talk a little bit more about what it means? Yes. So think about it as a cloud engineer. Uh, most of our days uh, look like um, around cloud provisioning and uh, cloud native uh, provisioning, like uh, doing Kubernetes workloads and working with Kubernetes manifest, but there is another uh, portion of the time that you are working against other SaaS toolings. Like if you have monitoring system um, like New Relic or Datadog or uh, even Grafana, and in other end, you need to uh, make sure you are working with uh, CDN, for example, and other network compon uh, components that you have on your stack. 
and user management. So your basically day to day look like you have some cloud management and then you are using infrastructure as code, but you have a lot of other kind of management that you are still doing click ops and the teams that touching those system are still um, overlapping uh, with each other. And the concept of everything as code is basically taking uh, the concept of infrastructure as code and apply that on SaaS tooling as well. So you can see right now that Terraform have um, some great uh, provider support for uh, those SaaS toolings. And what we see in the industry that more and more teams embracing infrastructure as code with managing SaaS tooling as well. So it's, it's, it's like um, making use of code at every, uh, every stage of your um, software uh, development lifecycle. Right. Yes, that's right. Like, think about it. If you have, uh, for example, if you are a Terraform user, and I'm using Terraform as the example because this is the most common infrastructure as code uh, tool out there. So, if there is a provider, then why not to use it? Because then you are basically maintaining um, uh, the templates in your uh, uh, Git. And you are enjoying all of the benefits that you are enjoying with deploying, uh, for example, a Lambda function or an EC2 function. You can also uh, deploy a dashboard or a, a metric or an alarm. And then you are uh, avoiding that configuration chaos that we see right now on those SaaS tooling when you have a large team and everybody creating dashboards and you don't have that alignment. So it's basically solving a lot of the pains that we saw that infrastructure as code is solving on the cloud. Yeah, so so like writing code is not like the only way <laughs> to manage infrastructure now. Can be a good skill, but um, you can use these config files and to to automate your your infrastructure. Um, it's a good point. Yeah, thanks thanks a lot for sharing, Jan. Um, can you maybe share a little bit more about? Um, so we talked about what it is. What does it mean? Um, can you share a little bit more about what are the benefits uh, to an organization for when they right. or individual developers? Yeah. So I think uh, immutability is one of the benefits. So you create something uh, once with you know all of desired layout of the configuration, whether it's cloud or a SaaS tool, and then you are basically can replicate it to a different kind of environment and. That immutability is really, uh, really strong because it's also addressing uh, stuff that was very hard uh, back in the days, like uh, disaster recovery. So right now, disaster recovery uh, is something that can be easily managed by uh, having a proper infrastructure as code. Because once you have that template, the immutable template of uh, your ecosystem, whether it's a cloud and the monitoring and other like networking component and user management components, everything is one template, which is immutable. You can basically replicate it very easily uh, in a different region, even in a different cloud, if you're doing uh, that a multi-cloud kind of template. So I think this is one of the major uh, benefits. It also goes back to the point you mentioned about, um, you know, the dashboard example. So it makes sure basically with everything as a code, um, if I'm saying it correctly, that all the, everyone in your team would be on the same page and it would make collaboration also easier and provide that consistency across your team. Yes, of course. And um, as I mentioned, like the benefits of having a peer review, when you are creating a new dashboard in Grafana, you can do it without anyone uh, basically uh, making sure you are doing the right uh, uh, dashboard or the right alarm, but if you're using it so with infrastructure as code, you're basically uh, submitting a pull request. Somebody can overview it, see if everything is uh, okay, and then approve it. And um, like treating any other kind of you know uh, piece of code, um, you can enjoy also uh, the CI/CD pipeline uh, gating. If you have like a policy that you would like to enforce on a certain configuration, or um, or, or even a block 
a PR in case of something is not align, aligned. And even if you take it to the extreme, you can use um, the GitOps methodology on configuration on SaaS providers. So you can say that I would like to create new dashboard in Grafana. I can push it to master and then reconcile that configuration from the master branch into the actual Grafana uh, uh, server that you have, and everything will go through the Git workflow, which is amazing. If it's working very well for Kubernetes kind of deployments, it can work for other type of tooling that you have on your system. Amazing. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. And one, one question I have on like, um, like an for an individual level or teams level, um, whom does it help when we talk about team? teams? Yeah, I, I think um, uh, platform engineer uh, is uh, one of the main functions that is uh, like driving uh, infrastructure as code and everything as code and GitOps. And, and we see that this is like the, the one of the main agendas of platform engineer. But we, if you are talking specifically about uh, managing monitoring, so I guess an SRE team uh, can leverage that uh, 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 methodology to manage their monitoring. And uh, eventually every, everyone that responsible of that ecosystem can use that. So it can be on some cases, if it's a small team, a developer, but if you are talking about large organization, it can be either DevOps platform or SRE. Thanks a lot for sharing, Inan. And uh, one an obvious question is, how does one get started? So um, again, I'm going back to the Terraform uh, example. There is great documentation uh, in uh, the Terraform uh, for starting and creating new uh, assets using infrastructure as code. So I guess that if you have uh, already in place one of the system that Terraform have a provider for, and there is a huge list of systems that Terraform is supporting, you can just try to deploy uh, using Terraform plan and apply new configuration uh, um, using uh, infrastructure as code rather than doing it in the old uh, ClickOps way. And I also suggest uh, try out Firefly uh, because one of the benefits in Firefly is basically discovering uh, the assets that you have either on cloud or on uh, a, one of your SaaS tooling and then codify them using uh, Firefly. Amazing and thanks thanks for sharing uh, about that. One one question I have you know from what I learned with this this conversation is you know we're moving more towards you know putting everything in code and you know. Um, the, the, the automation part and less of the operator intervention part. So uh, we often talk about like, as I know some tools are coming out that are also focusing on automating security or whatever. And then next few years, I don't think folks, I think it, there would be a huge demand in things like, okay, here's my software, just run it. I don't care what you're using. <laughs> just, just handle the infrastructure on your own. So, uh, you know, there, as you mentioned, there's so many, so many services, so many solutions out there. According to you, what is next? Like, what's what is something that you're really looking forward to? If we talk about a few years down the line, I think um, you know we will see more abstractions layer um, of stuff that we are um, got used to do. Uh, let's say um, in house, so. Um, I really agree with what you just said. It's like, this is my container, take it, run it. You will make sure that it's secured and it's scalable. And we already see right now some some services that doing that, but I think we will see it more and more uh, because it's really, I, I think that the shortage of talent is really uh, severe. If you are taking the correlation of the amount of, organization that rushing to the cloud and cloud native and uh, microservice uh, uh, systems, there is not enough developers and engineers uh, 
to fulfill that work. So you will see a lot of innovation on automating stuff and abstracting stuff that will create the life of the typical cloud engineer uh, more easy and less fragmented. Amazing, and I, I think I think that's key as well, like embracing the these uh, you know best practices. Um, be that like when we talk about um, you know security and automation and all these other things, infrastructure, your policies, for example. So many open source projects and um, you know companies coming out with solutions with that. Um, it's it's like we were mentioning previously. Things are complex, but that's like the whole point. If we talk about 10, 15 years before, you have mainframes and stuff. That was, as compared to right now, that's the whole point why we have a complex, complex structure. And automating that, once we have put everything on code, we can do a little bit, we can focus more around uh, uh, gathering more insights around how it should, uh, it should take things forward. But I think, yeah, embracing code is the definitely the start for it. Cool. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Ian, uh, it was lovely talking to you. Thanks a lot for joining, and uh, I really appreciate you giving the time. For anyone, for anyone else who is watching, you can check out the links in the description below. Go check out um, GoFirefly.io. I'll be making a tutorial on it very, very soon as well. But I'll leave some links in the description below. And uh, as always, thanks a lot for watching, and thanks, Ian, once again for joining. And we'll see you in the next one. Okay. Thank you, Kunal. It was a pleasure.